Hi, I'm Tom, and if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I enjoy painting entire armies all at once. Check them out if you haven't seen them, and subscribe for future ones. Well, in this video, I show you the biggest painting challenge I've ever done. I painted three entire armies all at once. Three demon hosts of corn. This is also one of the best armies to start Warhammer with, as you can use your army in all three Warhammer games, 40k, Sigmar, and the Old World. As soon as this video goes live, I'll be listing all three armies for sale on eBay, so I can fund my next project. It took me just over 99 hours, so 33 hours per army isn't too bad. I painted them in a grimdark style using contrast paints, inks, washers and oil paints to achieve the style. It was super easy and it was fun to do. This video might teach you some new techniques and may help you become more efficient in painting your armies, or it may just motivate you to paint. Please leave a comment or ask me any questions. My army lists are in the video description. The models I painted were 130 blood letters, 20 flesh hounds, 15 blood crushers, 2 blood masters, 2 balakors, 2 skull cannons, 2 bloodthirsters, 2 skull takers, 2 karanax, a soul grinder, demon prince and a herald. <sighs> I used some skulls, some chain, and some spare bits to fix some of the models that were broken. A lot of these are eBay rescues. Some of them are broken arms and swords. I also got a cooking timer, as people don't believe me when I tell them how long I take to paint armies. I'll be using this throughout the video. Right, first step is to prime all the models black. I'm using an airbrush because I'm challenging myself to do this as quick as possible, but I'm not rushing myself, there's a huge difference. You could easily do this stage with just black spray cans. Always wear a mask, and I'll show you why later in the video. Let's speed this bit up. So, 2 hours 33 minutes to prime them all black. This is what my mask looked like with a clean filter in, just after doing the primary. Then I'm going to do all the metallics first, so all the blood crushers, the cannons, and the weapons. Put a glove on. Boop! It's better. Right, start the timer again. So I stopped the timer when I wasn't painting, I'm only timing my painting time. All the armor panels on the bloodthirsters were painted silver, the weapons, all the blood crushers. It only took about 30 minutes. The soul grinder also got its arms and legs painted. Then onto the most boring stage, the gold trim. With them being corn, they are covered in trim. Thankfully all the blood letters aren't, but all of the other models have gold trim. All the blood crushers had their chest cavities painted. Took 2 hours 45 minutes just to do half of it. If I was to express this feeling in an emoji, it would be this. There we go. All of the gold trim done. As you can see, that took me quite a few hours to do all of the trim. Then I gave all the gold a wash with a flesh wash. So the reason you use this flesh wash, it adds a rich depth to the gold, it makes it look a bit worn and knocks back some of the gloss from it. Then on to Agrax Earthshade. Little tip, if you don't want to knock your pot over, put some blue tack on, or pink tack and stick it down and it won't fall over saving you five pounds probably more than five pounds now so i applied the agrax all over the models don't worry about it being messy we're going for dirty battle worn splattered with blood look as you can see here it's transformed the model already and then i use my brush after just to get any pools of ink that i've, I've stuck behind you can tell the difference between a washed one and an unwashed uh, uh, Nurgle, unwashed. There you go, huge transformation. There we go, 12 hours in. Did it on the weapon as well. 
Then we're going to move on to painting all these teeth. Because apparently the axes are actual demons, or were demons at some point in the lore. How cool is that? Made all the teeth on all of the models with a wraith bone or bone colour. You'd even use white. And then I painted all the fleshy areas and skulls as well. Like here on the skull cannon, it's covered in random teeth and horns. And then went over it all once it had dried with contrast. Skeleton horde. This is basically like a bone wash. <laughs> I also spread this over the edge of the blade as well because I want to take some of the shine off and make it look a bit damaged and dirty. I painted all the skulls in there. Don't worry about it spreading over a little bit. If you're making any mistakes, if you're quick, you can mop it up with a bit of water on a brush as well. So then Agrax are over the teeth as well, so I want to darken them down a bit as well. And again, I'll go in over the edge of the blade, leaving the, the flat bit. But the thing about washers as well, you can add multiple layers of them. So 14 hours in onto Gulman Flesh, or any flesh wash, using this all over the soft areas. So after that was done, I, I cleared up the table and I moved on to doing the blood letters. So here is a test model where I've sprayed ink over black and it's a bit too dark. But like I say, I want the arms and horns and feet to be black. It look demonic. The areas where the scales are over the black, I'm going to aim for the scaly areas with white, the face and the chest. So the swords, I'm leaving a little bit of black right down near the hilt and blending it into white. The face is getting a blast of white, and then any scaly areas are white as well. Again, don't worry about it being messy at the minute. But yeah, scaly areas, white. So top of the thighs, top of the shoulders, back, and chest. You can see that it only took me a few seconds to do. I had to do 130 of them. So 18 hours in, I'm still doing the white highlights, so the bloodthirsters. I get in a, this is called zenithal highlight, so it's where the sun would be at zenith at the top of the sky, 12 o'clock, whatever you want to call it. So it took me well, 19 hours there to get them all uh, highlighted. And then onto the ink. So this is a transparent acrylic ink, so it's see-through. You want to see it's transparent, so it will show up. The highlights, the white bits, will show up and be lighter than the black bits, is what we want to know about transparent. So... I applied a layer of this all over the white areas and black areas, basically everywhere. You can see here it transforms them. And it looks glossy going on. I painted the swords as well. So it looks glossy. That's just because it's wet, but it will dry matte. There we go, 20 hours later after starting, and I think I've got half the blood letters done in red. There you go, that's a newly sprayed one and then a dry one. As you can see the black blend is very clear. And this is the power of the highlights so, and the transparent ink. So the white areas are lighter, black areas are still red, but it's a darker red. So it saved us a lot of time with highlights and stuff. There you go, the sword blend, it looks really cool already. Then on to all the tongues. So I used Demonet Hide, was it two or three little strokes of the brush and the tongues are done. Don't worry about it being messy because you can paint the teeth. So 26 hours in, I've got all the tongues done, all the red done. The bloodlet here had a bit of gloss on it so from the ink so I've sprayed it with a matte varnish and it just dulls it down. And I've gone on to a black so all of the fur and all the edges where the wings join the and body and going black for a fade and leaving I want to do black at the top of the horns on every single model where it blends into red in the face the hands are black the feet are black as well but it's all a fade from black to red there you go looking demonic and weird and ominous the spine things are painted black as well the feet as I said are blend up into black and then with this Bloodthirster, I did a black blend into the face as well. And it looked pretty cool. And a little tip, because this is an ink, if you do make any mistakes, I think it's Mephiston Red, the Citadel paint. 
goes over um, this ink and is a very, very similar match. So you can use that to touch up any mistakes. So 30 hours in, there you go, there's the blend on the face, paint the eyes yellow, bit of wash, I think it's Iandin contrast paint. Here's Karanak, got black around the edge of the face, so I'll just make the, the faces pop and look cooler, and then the feet are black. And then I went on to the blood letters, painting them all the black on them. So horns, painted black, hands, feet, and the back fins, and the end of the top of the head. And again, I said, if you get, if you get any overspray or mistakes, Mephiston red you can use to uh, tidy up afterwards, like this guy. I actually get accidentally uh, sprayed them in the face there. So, but the edge of the banners, it's just uh, the same red ink over white, and then I did a black fade. Then onto the bud letters. So I'm using a flesh paint here. I'm aiming for more flesh color at the bottom of the the wing membrane. Lighter application of it at the top. So it's going to be a fade down the wings as well. This will have a a wash over the top as well. But yeah, it's just a. Uh, Again, imagine it as like a xenophil highlight. I'm making a, a base for a color to go over the top. Same theory as contrast paints. I also did a flesh fade on all of the hound face wing things, whatever they're called. Got some overspray there on his foot, but again, doesn't matter. I can spray that black afterwards or paint it black after. There you go. Looks cool already. It's all coming together. And then after the silver and gold trim stage, for my own sanity, I did 30 blood letters at a time. Like completely finished them all the stages and then I, I went off and started another 30. So I had to do 30 of uh, 130 in a row doing the exact same stages. I go crazy. Stage was to add silver or do the metallics and gold on the models as well. So there we go, 30 hours in. So gold on the on the sword hilts, and armor panels. The, some of the horns have metal caps. There you go. So I did thirty like this, and then moved on to another thirty. The banner tops. There's the school taker. Reichland flesh shade again. Over all the gold, fill it down. These models are surprisingly detailed for corn demons. I thought they'd be um, well, fun to paint, but not as detailed, but they've got a lot of detail on. Then I used Uriel Yellow to paint every single eyeball on all of the models. And again, the eyeballs, if you mess up and go onto the areas you don't want to paint, Mephiston Red, you can use that to neaten them up. Right, and then contrast paint I used on some of the leather bits. There's barely any leather on these models. 39 hours in now, and on to the wing membrane. So Caribou Crimson is one of my favorite paint slash washes. It's just a really nice color. And I'm spraying it all over the wings here. So it's over the black and the flesh paint that's on the wing. You have to add two layers on here, and I'm intentionally not adding, I don't want to apply too much for it to stop running or pooling. So I have one thin layer, let it dry, and then apply another layer. At the second layer, I'm aiming just in the middle of the membrane. So it's like paler on the edges where the, the sort of fingers of the mem wings are. And I built the blood crushers, like stuck the things on top. Some of them here have been kit bashed with a bit of chain. They look pretty sick. Pretty cool already, just for some wash and some inks and base layers. Right, 46 hours in. Got the wings base coated. They look really cool and ominous. The metallics done on the, the uh, bloodthirsters as well. And then I didn't like the black, so I'm gonna knock that back a bit with the same ink. That's the base layer for all of the demons. There you go, add a bit of rich red to them. Boop. And applied all the armor panels and the weapon. All the bone here, the, like the horns have been washed with skeleton horde as well. And then I did a one-to-one -one Reichland flesh aid to water mix in all the wings. So this should go into all of the recesses and make the detail pop. 
I don't want to apply it um, straight out of the pot because it'll darken them down too much. And then I painted runes on the back of the wings white and then added blood. This is a shot from later in the video because uh, this has had like an oil wash over the top. I just thought I'd show you the rune bit here. So it's one layer of blood paint and then I added a second after. So 50 hours in, uh, that's when I started work on the bellicors. So black underneath and did a xenophil highlight from above and white. And then where all the black is left, so from underneath upward, I'm spraying the same flesh colour that was on all the wings. And the reason I'm doing this because I'm going to spray black from above and then it will sort of give it, yeah, a weird, it's going to look really evil and weird, demonic look. And that's the same theory on these wings that I did on the blood letters. Then Caribou Crimson, again aiming at the, more of the Caribou at the top of the wings than at the bottom. So there's a fade there, look. Two layers, and I did it all over the, the rest of the body as well. Don't worry about overspray again, because I'm going to go over this with a black. So, Contrast Black Templar. So I'm aiming for all the, the sort of horned areas, any plates and above like you would do a xenophil highlight but with black instead it's the opposite of a xenophil it's got an eclipse eclipse highlight there you go on the shoulders the armor panels and on the horns as well i did one of the bellicors with black horns and then one with bone colored and here you see i'm intentionally leaving the flesh recesses give some uh, contrast to his sort of abs and then I used the contrast to paint all the fingers of the wings and then a bit of a black fade at the top. So here we go, I'm just spraying all the fingers. We call them in a bat, so you assume they're called fingers. There we go, fade of black and then spray at the top a little bit with black as well. There you go, looks pretty cool already. So 57 hours in. I went ahead and did a bit of experiment on one of them. I painted the chest and yeah, I did a flesh wash on one to see what it looked like. So again, one to one mix of flesh shade. And this actually went a bit weird. I think it's because of the end of the pot of paint. When it dried, it left loads of white patches. It was a bit weird, but it, it didn't matter because they got covered up in an ink. So 71 hours in, I varnished everything. So matte varnish and then I made an oil wash which is literally just a slug sized bit of oil with some white spirit on top. And the reason we varnished is so that the white spirit doesn't damage all the paint job underneath. Applied this all over the models, avoiding the tops of the swords, still painted it around the hilts. And here you see the white patches on the wings from the wash, very weird, but here we are. So here's the wash going on, it's running into all the recesses, exactly what I want it to do. And don't worry about if you've over applied it or it's too thick. The cool thing about oil wash and why I use it is you can remove it. It sort of stains it and leaves it a darker color. But if you dislike how much you've applied, you can just remove it with um, some white spirit. And a lot of people ask me, this oil, it's not the same as Nuln oil. All of Citadel's paints are acrylic, so they're water based. And this is a, like an artist oil paint. That you would use for painting on a canvas so it's completely different um, but you can use other mediums in miniature painting you don't have to use just the critics so here we go I've, I've applied oil over all the models and then i get a brush the same brush just rinse it out with mineral spirits to clean it and then I'm basically cleaning the models. So where you can see here, it started off really dark. I've used a bit of the spirit and I'm I'm wiping downwards. It helps clean some of the flat panels and then leaves the oil in the recesses. You see it's really thick on the bottom bits here, but yeah, after washing it with the spirits a little bit, it clears it. And if you've overdone it, you can just reapply the oil again and clean it up again. You see here on the legs, there's actually patches of oil, so it just shows you here that this um, stage cleans that up. 
And then here's the experimental bellicor. So I've done blood splatter and gore and paint the sword and it looks freaking sweet. So I'm gonna replicate this on the other one. I often do this in a project. I won't sort of plan ahead of schedule. I just start painting and see how it goes. So, and I'm, I'm painting as fast as I can, but I'm not rushing myself. So the base is just painted black, dry brushed gray. I painted all the sort of recessed bits, cracked bits with white, and then filled them with blood for the blood god, which is Citadel's or Games Workshop's blood paint. And did some smears on all the weapons, which looks pretty cool. As I showed you, did all the runes. This one's had blood splatter on as well. Just makes it look like carnage. All of the banners have like blood on as well. Painted them white and then red over the top. And then here's just to show you what the oil wash does to a blood letter. So it um, darkens it down, takes away some of the shine as well. And then I've, I've cleaned these again with a bit of spirit in a brush. Okay, and then I'll show you how I did this blood splatter. So you get a goo cheesecake from the shop. You eat the cheesecake, wash it out. There we go, glass jar, you can use for miniature painting. And then you can use a toothbrush, old one obviously, or a paintbrush and an airbrush, which is what I did. So there's no paint in the airbrush, it's just air. So I get a huge dollop of the blood paint, blood for the blood god. In a jar, I mix in some water. I just use dirty paint water. It doesn't matter if it's clean, because we're making it dirty anyway. And then I dip the brush in the watery blood and then spray air on it. It splatters all over the models. Blood for the blood god. And there's big blobs of, of blood on here. Don't worry about that. We will make the blobs a more realistic size later on. So you can use, you see I'm using the airbrush to sort of spread it around as well. Use the brush to just smear it on stuff as well. And again, if you're using a toothbrush, this is the same. You're just spraying it onto the models. And I'm aiming for the bottom of the wings here. Not necessarily near the top. It doesn't matter if some goes higher up, but I'm aiming for the bottom, bottom half of them. Looking pretty cool. It's nice and fun as well, you can be really messy. And then I'm sort of smearing down onto the sort of fingers. Pretty sure these are called fingers. Okay, and then get some of the mineral spirits that we use for the oil wash. You clean the brush, just a little bit damp. You don't need to have it soaking in it. And then all the big blobs, you just sort of dab on. Reacts with the water in the the sort of wash and makes the blob small and you can sort of smear it and streak it as well yeah so it sort of breaks the surface tension of the water is the best way to describe it so any big blobs you can thin out and make more realistic size realistic as if demons exist right and then i did exactly the same i did with the blood with the oil wash so a bit of oil wash on the brush spray it over everything and this just adds some extra battle damage and battle gore. And it, it could also um, break up all the big blood splodges, but I let the blood layer dry before I did this. Right, and then on to the swords. So get white, and then I'm spraying the blades, again, same as I did over the black, into a fade, but not all the way down the blade. And then I'm going to spray them yellow on the end, make them look sort of like a flaming sword, but it just looks cool. So I used contrast the hand in yellow, and I'm spraying the whole length of the blade all the way down to the hilt even, so it goes over all the red as well, and the black. The yellow helps it all blend together. There you go. So I did that on all 130 of them. Then Basilicanum Grey, I did this on the basis. Some of them have rocks and stones and stuff on them. 
So I applied this, you can apply two layers if you want it to be darker. And I painted all the schools as well. And then to show you how I replicated the glow on the sword, so I used amethyst, amethyst blue as a base on the bellicor. And then use magenta as the next highlight. And then fluorescent magenta. This is what it'll look like. And then black smoke at the top. So there's the blue. And then I'm playing the magenta. And I'm intentionally think of it in thirds. So one third blue, one third magenta, one third fluorescent. I applied numerous layers of this because it's it's very thin paint. Tidy up. So the chest again, yeah, white highlight, blue, and then the two pinks over the top. And then for the fluorescent, I did a white highlight because it's this is a very thin paint. And then on some of them have flames. So the corn demon. I think it looked cooler to paint this as flame. Base layered it white, used the Iandin yellow and sprayed that over all of the flame. Then I used this again acrylic ink, vivid red, red orange. And you're aiming for the flame sort of tips. So again, thirds, I'll leave a third of it yellow, third of it orange, third of it red. There you go. This is uh, so easy to do as well, it makes it look amazing. There you go, there's the orange. Did that on both sides. And then I moved on to the red. So same red that was on all the on the demons and all the swords and everything. So again, top two thirds red, leaving some of the orange, some of the yellow behind. There you go. That looks pretty cool. And then I used black just to the top of the flame tips. When you look at real fire, it doesn't. It's not all red and yellow and orange. It turns into smoke at the end, so black on the tips. There you go. Demon fire. That, uh, it made sense to, to paint it a fire colour. And it looks cool. Right, and then on to the basing. So, quality. Get some quality street chocolates, eat the chocolates, and then I'm going to make some basic material. I'm going to apply some schools, some chain, and for the basing material, I've got some aquatic gravel. By basing material, it would have cost me a fortune, but eight kilograms of sand. I thought, yep, yeah, buy that. Didn't know they come in smaller packs, though. That's funny. So I'll note it for next time. Um, so I've got some black sand and some black tile grout. So this is going to react with the water and turn into a hard base material. And then I've got some sand and stones from the beach. One of the perks of living near the sea. So I'm just winging this. So some sand and stones. I think I did three or four scoops of that into the tub. The reason I'm using a big tub is the models need to fit in it to uh, dunk them into the, to the base material. Then some of this sand, you see it's sort of like medium sized, like small rocks. But yeah, this would have cost, to, to base all these models would have cost me um, like 30, 40 quid or something in, in materials if I bought it from a shop. So I thought I'd make my own. There you go. Some sand, some rocks and some beach sand. Mix it all together. Oh, it's pretty cool. Good mix of the two, no pun intended. And then some tile grout. I think I put two in but I think you'd probably get away with one. And then shuck it all up, and I'm wearing a mask for all this as well. There you go, basic material. So I'm 87 by 88 hours in now. I've got to do all the basing, and I'm counting this as painting. Got some, I use some cork board to raise some of the models up. Just break off chunks, paint them. I had to make sure all the bases were painted black before I based them, because there's, there's a lot of red spray and other colors on the bases, so. There you go, some black cork and some glue. Uh, it's just the cheapest glue in the shop. With some water, I think it's one to one with water. The reason I'm mixing it with water is again to activate the uh, tile grout. There you go, so cover the base. And then I dunked it in my base mix. 
shake it off, tap off the excess, and then I clean the base edges with a cotton bud and painted them all black. Nice and smart. And then I added some weathering pigment, some just sand weathering pigment, some skulls, and then I put a black oil wash over the top of them all as well. And then here on the blood crushes, I've applied extra blood. So you see that that's like around its shoulders. It looks like it's plowed through a line of infantry. And that is it. The 40k army consists of a Bellacore, a Bloodmaster, a Bloodthirster, Karanak, Skull Taker, 40 Blood Letters, 6 Blood Crushers, 5 Flesh Hounds, a Skull Cannon, and a Soul Grinder. And the Sigma army is a Bellacore, Bloodthirster, Bloodmaster, Skulltaker, Karanak, 40 Blood Letters, 3 Blood Crushers, and 5 Flesh Hounds. And the Old World army is a Demon Prince, a Herald, a Skull Cannon, 50 Blood Letters, 10 Hounds, and 6 Blood Crushers. So please let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, ask in the comments. You can give it a like and please consider subscribing. If you want to support me further, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can access my Discord server, see behind the scenes of me creating these armies, and share your hobby progress too. Thank you to my current Patreon supporters, Christopher Robinson, Lee Auburn, Jamicus, Simon Neville, Charlie Robertson, Clown Skull, and Jason Lantrip. Hail to you, champions. Like I said at the beginning, the armies are now live on eBay. I'm selling them to reinvest in future projects. Thank you. Bye.